Lawrence. I said that with a French accent, didn't I? Lawrence. I'm assuming you're a man, but you might be a woman. Lawrence. Uh, when Ericsson conducted therapy, the sessions would regularly extend beyond the standard hour. When asked why he did this, he replied that it just seemed to take that long to get something done. <laughs> okay. Well, how do you know? Well, first of all, with the, you know, as professional career hypnotherapists, we we do have a timetabling. We, we do we have clients coming in or we see them online, or whatever. We don't have the luxury of necessarily of having an hour, an hour and a half. Now, it's not true. Ericsson did this every single time with an hour and a half. You know, it depended on the client, etc., and the interactions. Ericsson saw a lot of clients, you know, basically when he was retired, of course, but also when he was working as a professor and, you know, university, working with university students. So he had a lot of time, more time than maybe we would normally have if we've got a busy practice. So let's just talk about is the is the is the therapy finished at the end of the hour? How do we know? You know, uh, well, in an ideal world, we don't need to decide. The client will let us know, which is exactly what Lawrence is saying in, in this in this question about Ericsson. Ericsson would wait until he got nonverbal cues from the client, changes in the in, in, the, in the way the person was uh, breathing and, and the, the, the work is done. And so he would then say, OK, we, we bring the client out. OK, in the ideal world, that would be a wonderful thing to do if you can ha have the time to do that. However, is it necessary? Well, you have two choices, don't you? You can either say, right, OK, I'm going to finish every hour because that's the way I schedule sessions. OK, and I'll just continue next time. OK, that's OK. Yes, that's pretty much what everybody does. Another thing you can do is have an hour and a half sessions. OK, 90 minute sessions. OK, wonderful. Do that. If you haven't got that many clients, why not do that? That's fine. OK, and, and check it out. See what see what it's like to to be an Ericksonian waiting for the client to tell you when the work's done. The other choice is, is to change the way you work to do everything you need to do within that hour. Now, this is a different matter, of course. Let me explain what I mean by this. OK, when I first started doing hypnotherapy back in the 1970s, late 70s, 79, I started as a, as a hypnotherapist and I had a lot of clients to see. So I only had a, an hour or so, but they were always coming back for following sessions. So I had chance to see them several sessions. I could carry on where I was working the first time. So that fitted that particular way of working. No problem, which is kind of normal. OK. When I started teaching, things started to change because I was doing a lot of teaching internationally, you know, traveling here and there. And whenever I taught for an organization, someone in Canada or wherever I was, um, I'd always asked to see clients as part of the training program. So they would find clients for me and I'd do maybe half a dozen sessions, depending on how many days I was teaching. Now that client, of course, I didn't meet them beforehand. I did, you know, often I didn't know what the problem was going to be. It's literally fly by the seat of your pants time, you know, and so they'd sit down with me in front of a group. And I had basically, uh, an hour, an hour and a half, if I wanted to, to do some therapy, I could decide. And in those contexts, two things happened. In those contexts, I could spend more time if I needed to. And so I could wait for the client to kind of tell me, and that's usually kind of what I did. So I get feedback from the client. But secondly, I wasn't going to see them for follow-up sessions. So I knew that whatever we had to do had to happen in that one session, whether it was an hour, an hour and a half. So it changed the way I worked. It meant that I could adapt to a one hour session, well, an hour, half hour session, two hour session, or in some cases, whole day sessions. Believe me, I've done, I've done three, three whole day sessions with one client. Yeah, that was uh, very tiring, but good work anyway. So I learned to, to compress what I did. And that, so when I had an hour and a half, I had the luxury of sitting back because I'd learned to compress, learn to compress, learn to compress. And by doing it that way, I'm still getting the results I want because I'm taking the client on a journey where I'm initiating unconscious problem solving or healing more efficiently, should I say, or more quickly than I would have done earlier. Uh, and that comes through just uh, being forced to do it, being limited with, with, with time and limited with how many sessions I could see somebody. And that taught me an awful lot. 
in fact. So Lawrence, that, that, uh, let me just explain how I realized I had to do that. Just a short little uh, history about myself. You know, when I was a kid, when I was, when I was young, rather, I went into the music business, first of all, as, as a recording artist, and then I worked in recording studios. And back then, you know, we're talking late 70s, uh, early 80s, when I became a hypnotherapist, at the same time, I was doing working in a recording uh, industry. And so back then we had, uh, if you're familiar with mixing desks, and you could you had so many tracks on a mixing desk. Now they have thousands, you can have as many as you want, you know, you're micing up a drum kit, you could have 10 microphones. But back then, it was one mic for the drums, one mic for a guitar, one mic for the bass or whatever, four. And when I started, it was eight tracks. And when I realized, you know, then you had to kind of imagine the outcome you wanted, way ahead of time, and then get it down on those eight tracks, usually your six tracks, and then you'd bounce them into stereo on the other two, then you'd have you free up another six tracks. Okay, and you'd be bouncing things back and forwards with the recording, and unfortunately, creating some tape hiss on each bounce. But anyway, that was the way it works. So you're having to think ahead like chess, of what the finished product's going to sound like. And so that taught me to limit myself, if I limit myself, when I'm learning, then what happens is I become more uh, effective, efficient, faster, uh, and more intuitive. So if you can learn to do that, if you can deliberately limit yourself, there's a benefit in doing that. So Lawrence, I hope that's answered your question.